Welcome to this Web Extra. Our topic this week on Frontiers is using plants as food and medicine, sort of the store outside your door, the pharmacy outside your door. And joining us, Dr. Gary Ferguson, who uh, has been involved in this emerging field for a long time, Dr. Allison Kelleher as well. It's called Integrative Medicine. And, you know, you find a lot of skepticism uh, when it comes to sort of mixing traditional medicine with science, that people say, ah, you know, you shouldn't do that. I think we do have to use caution when using natural remedies. Um, so if we have an emergency that truly is an emergency, we should use what has the best evidence. Um, so the emergency rooms and hospitals and clinics exist for very good reasons. Uh, but also there's that time before critical illness and disease where we have an, a window of opportunity to be as healthy and resilient as possible to prevent illness or have a better chance of surviving those illnesses. So that's really where the ancient ethnomedicines and natural medicines shine. Well, both of you have kind of gone into your own practices, businesses, consulting, and Gary, I know that you travel the state uh, advising people on, on wellness, on well communities. And what are you finding about plants and people's receptiveness to returning to this? So there is a really um, huge interest in our plants as food and medicine and, you know, this honoring of our, our, our traditional ways of knowing that have existed for thousands of years. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of our medicines today have a natural analog that is a plant-based or natural-based medicine that often comes from our traditional cultures, you know, in, you know, for example, uh, in Southeast Alaska, our Shimshin, Clinkett, and Haida, uh, cultures brought forward um, the yew the yew tree, and the yew tree is as a cancer fighter in for a host of other diseases, and that has become a blockbuster drug now called tamoxifen, which is often used for breast cancer or prostate cancer. So a lot of people don't realize that that actually comes from an indigenous medicine, and many of our medicines do, and and a lot of our tribal doctors and traditional healers are reminding us that our powerful plants are still as powerful as they were, in fact they adapt to the environment. And so they're especially potent and powerful now as we look at healing the issues that we face today. Well, a lot of medicines are very expensive today. I mean, we hear all the time about, you know, how people forego them or don't take enough of them because they, they can't even afford the copay if they have insurance. Not to say that they're a substitute, but you know, where do they fit in in our sense of well-being and health? They fit in in so many different ways. Just looking around and seeing what plants are growing in your yard, uh, should it be a non-toxic yard, and getting to know those plants in your garden or specifically planting healthful plants in your garden can be so beneficial. Um, but really incorporating these plants into your daily life, into your um, diet, um, in making nutritious teas, it really has a, a wonderful opportunity, I think, for all of us to live those more healthful lives with, with less um, food-like um, substances that we're consuming, those processed foods that really tend to lead to chronic disease and um, the epidemics that we're having with diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and those other inflammatory diseases that plants specifically can fight. When I think about the medicine of plants, I think they are fighting plants even though they're not moving. They can stay in place and they have all of their pharmacy inside of them. And really that doesn't cost a whole lot of money to learn about those plants and to harvest them and um, dry them or take them in their raw form. Well, Gary, you work with a lot of young people across the state and, and you know take them out to look at what, what is in their backyard. And, how does that affect them? Do you see, do you see them embrace it? Well, I think our young people are really hungry for knowledge and connecting to the outdoors. And we've got a condition today that we, we say um, our young people have nature deficit disorder, which really is true. We're on our devices, we're inside. And I think connecting to nature is healing just in itself, being in nature and being around the plants and, and understanding that these plants can be used to help prevent disease. And, 
That really is, I think, the most powerful thing about our plants as we use them to not just treat disease once you get sick, but to ideally prevent it. And, you know, as we shared earlier in the show, you know, blueberries and our crowberries, our mossberries, things that we can collect in season, we can store, we can preserve, we can dry, and we can drink the, the teas throughout the year. Um, these help us stay strong. And rather than wait until you get the cold or the flu, there's ways to prevent that through these wonderful teas and these healing, these healing Boost plants. your immune system. Exactly. But when do you kind of exercise some caution with these? Because, you know, we have chaga right here. Uh, which is, is supposedly very powerful. And I've heard practitioners of traditional medicine say they drink this regularly as tea, but they take a break from it periodically. So, I mean, are there some dangers with some of these plants? That's a great question, Rhonda. I do think that we should know about plants and have some knowledge before we go trying plants. So learning from experts and being in community, that's a great benefit of, of having an interest in plants, is finding people who have similar interests and then forming a community to be harvesting consciously in that way. The cautions I use are, are if folks tend to be elderly or if they're children, um, I use caution with plant medicine and get more information before I would use it to make sure that it is safe. Also, if folks are on um, blood thinners, that is always a caution with plants um, because the vitamin K can change, the, that is in green plants, can change the way that um, the antiplatelet therapy is working. So I'm cautious with that, as well as if folks are on pharmaceutical medications. So that really requires a discussion with a professional, a naturopath, a physician who's trained in integrative or holistic medicine, um, or also there are pharmacists that are wonderful resources for patients to access that information from. Well, when you travel to communities, I'm sure that you probably want to go and investigate <laughs> what's growing because it's different in different places. You know, different regions use different plants as medicine. Absolutely. And so we have just this wonderful pharmacopoeia in Alaska. What are some of your favorites across the state? You know, I love blueberries. They're always one of my favorites. And so I try blueberry um, tea, but also blueberries and, and, and harvesting the plants. One thing I'm conscious of is to harvest less than 10% of the plant. And that's a, a good rule that I use until I get to know the plant community to harvest a smaller percentage of those plants. Um, the other thing that I like to do as far as taking breaks from medicines is think sometimes of medicines, the botanicals and natural medicines as five days on and two days off to give yourself a break from some of those metabolic um, breakdown products that come from the plant or, or the medicine. So, uh, five days on, two days off, or sometimes six weeks on, two weeks off are some rules that I've been taught to guide how long you should be on, um, on those botanicals. I also have to say that I love spruce, and so collecting spruce pitch is one of my favorite things to do as I travel. So I'm often traveling with things like sharp scissors, gloves, um, bags for harvesting, my cuspuck for harvesting, sometimes a small you shovel. A, you must be a TSA nightmare. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> they look at your bag, your bag and you go. To check yes. a bag then. <laughs> What do you think of, about uh, spruce pitch? I've heard in Southeast that they use it to heal wounds. It's a wonderful healer. And, you know, again, think about what spruce pitch is used for with the tree. It helps the tree heal itself. And I always think about that, like, like nature is wise. And as the, the plant uses these properties to help heal itself, it also transmits to us. And what's known about our plants in Alaska are they're especially potent because it's a harsh environment. And research has shown that the harsher the environment, the more the, of these disease-fighting, um, immune-boosting properties that our plants have. And so it's, it's one of those where you might only need a small amount of the plant. And that's, again, the potency of our plants are especially powerful. So if you've collected a plant in the lower 48, where it's not as harsh of an environment, and you collect it here, you might only need about a, a fraction or a quarter of the plant as far as the, no, the, the normal amount that you would take. So that's also something to realize that our plants are really potent here in the state of Alaska. 
All right, well, I want to thank both of you for joining us. And on Frontiers, we'll have more about some of these plants that are sitting in front of us. So thanks for joining us, Gary Ferguson and Allison Kelleher. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.